What mess kit should I get? Now, I've done videos like this before. In fact, mess kit videos tend to be the most popular videos on my channel. Now, I don't know if many of those people come back and watch my channel, but at least finding information about mess kits, a lot of people find my channel and that's what they tend to like. Um, but this particular video is going to try to answer, ultimately, what makes a good mess kit, a great mess kit, and an awesome mess kit. Now, being a student of history, having so many historical references and being able to use the majority of them, I have developed my own personal feelings on this. Now, of course, it just depends on what you're doing too, right? If you're just going out for a day hike or something, you know you're not going to need something big and bulky, then you might need to scale it down. And in truth, you don't need super expensive gear to get outside. I don't want you to walk away from this video thinking you need to buy something that's really expensive or something that's awesome to have a good time in the outdoors. No, it's quite the opposite. You can actually look around your kitchen, find an old skillet, or maybe hit the thrift store, find an old skillet or something, and maybe a pot, attach that to your backpack, and you can go, okay? So I don't want my gear series, all my artifacts and something, to give you the opinion that you need to spend a lot of money. You don't. You really, really don't. You can keep it simple, okay? Especially if you're just starting out. If you're just starting out, you're not sure if you know, outdoor adventure, hiking, camping, or whatever is really your thing, then you don't want to go and buy a bunch of gear that you're just going to sell on Facebook Marketplace or somewhere or just throw away, right? So this video is to try to get you thinking about some of the nuances of good kit. That way, as you progress and as you might start uh, looking at upgrading your gear, you can take some of these ideas with you and make good decisions, you know, spend money wisely, if you will, all right? So all these uh, different mess kits on here, this table, we've done videos on. And really quick, we can negate some of these from being good, great, or awesome. The first thing is the military mess kits. Military mess kits, as they are called mess kits, and we've done a video on this, I'm not gonna go into it, um, are designed just for a very basic utilitarian use. Now, if you're starting out, these are cheap, yeah, go for it, sure, try it out. But it has a lot of limiting features to it. It's very limiting. And a good quality piece of mess kit that you're going to go with, especially if it's longer, if it's not just a day hike, but if it's for a weekend or longer, you wanna have some versatility to it. Now the Upton or Stopple mess kit, this is a really cool piece of kit, a lot of neat features that might be gimmicky, not sure. Um, it's nice. I would put this in the area of great for most applications. The reason why this is not awesome is because it's very unstable, very unstable. So if you are going to uh, put it on the ground or something like that, you really have to support this to use it well. So I'll put that in like lower great, not awesome though. Now these next two, are uh, probably my favorite and my, my most used. We've got the Scout Mess Kit. It's been around since 1915. You can still go to the big box store today and buy one of these, and in fact, stainless steel. So if you've got a fear of aluminum, then you don't want to buy an antique one, then there you go. There's your options. Uh, but this design has lasted so long, not just because of marketing, but because it is so utilitarian. That's why it's so good, in my opinion. So the Scout Mess Kit, I think, is definitely higher end of great. The best, oh, awesome mess kit that I still stand by is the Theros Mess Kit. You can't find a Theros Mess Kit today. Now for the Scout Mess Kit and the Theros, the closest modern equivalents that I have found, I put in the description box below. So if you are interested in an awesome mess kit or a upper end great mess kit, maybe awesome, you know, this does everything, right? Then check out those links below, okay? But uh, what separates the Theros mess kit from the Scout mess kit is the fuel source. So the Theros mess kit has two pots, it has a skillet, it has a cup, but it also has a way of fueling 
or heating up whatever food that you use. And it has some versatility in it. And I think that's pretty nice. Whenever you think about something, you want to be able to adapt it to multiple ways. So the Theros mess kit is the best in my opinion. At the end of the video, I will show you, you know, the link up here. It'll be in a box so you can watch the video on my Theros mess kit if you haven't done so already. So Scout Theros. Now, the coolest historical mess kit I have besides the Theros that has a lot of press and um, even got some high marks praise from Kephart was the Preston mess kit. Now, really quick, Preston mess kit was designed by someone, a lieutenant in the US Army. His name is Guy Preston. And Lieutenant Preston designed this mess kit with military functionality in mind because historically, and today to some lesser extent, Historically, officers had to buy all their equipment, all their own equipment, whether it be a sleeping bag, whether it be a mess kit, canteen, uniform, cot, whatever that you're going to take out in the field, you had to purchase it yourself. So coming from that background, this mess kit has a lot of military utilitarian use. And I think that's one of the reasons why it has the one limitation that it has. But it's ingeniously design. Extremely well designed. Overall, um, it's intricately designed. Later on in the mess kit's history, Abercrombie and Fitch became a partner and started selling this mess kit. Now, if you're looking for one of these yourself, they're as rare as hen's teeth and they tend to be really expensive. And there's two versions. There's one version that has the half cup, or I'm sorry, the half canteen, and there's my version, which has the full canteen. So there's some variations there. But if you're trying to find an idea of whether it's an old, old one or more of a kind of a, a later end in the series, there's some key features to it. The older models, they are canvas wrapped and they don't have a felt lining inside. They just have a plain cork and they have the, uh, the hooks, the quick release hooks, like what you would find on a boot instead of snaps. Now, as time goes on, especially with Abercrombie and Fish, they make some adaptations to it. Like they put the felt lining inside of it. They put some flaps with snaps instead of the quick release hooks. And the cork itself or the closure itself has a metal cap, has a chain, and it links to the body of the canteen. Okay. So this one here, I'm thinking is late 1800s maybe early 1900s. The patent was designed in 1895, but it got approved in 1896. So it's a pretty old style mess kit. And if you're trekking or if you're camping with others, this is great because it has everything that you would need to suit your needs with some versatility in it. If you're camping long term, then I think you need to add another piece of kit to this to really make it complete or serviceable. And we'll talk about that here in a bit. I'm gonna move the camera so you can see me unpack this thing and we'll talk about some of its features and uh, then we'll finish it up after that. Okay, if you like this video, if you found it useful, if you found any value in it, please click like. That way other people find it, especially, you know, you'd be helping them out. They're trying to figure out what kind of mess kit to get, what kind of details that they need to look for for a good, great, or awesome mess kit, okay? So you'll be doing them a favor. All right, the mess kit has a canvas body and it has leather reinforced panel here. Some of them have a leather reinforced bottom. This one does not. This also has a cloth strap. It's very thin. It's not a heavy cotton webbing. And as far as comparing this to scout mess kits and things like that, this one stretches out pretty far so it could fit an adult body, which is pretty neat. Okay. Um, it has this hook here. Now this hook is a common feature that you would find on military equipment in the late 1800s, early 1900s. You could attach this to your belt or you could attach this to a saddle ring. So that's pretty handy, especially if you're thinking about military application. Up top here, we can see these are the hooks, the quick release hooks that you would find on a lot of boots. We undo that, we open the flap and you have 
your opening to all your different pieces, including quickly you can find your utensils, which is nice. It's not tucked down in an awkward way. You can remove your knife if you need your knife really quick or your spoon or your fork. Before we go on, let's talk about these. The knife is original and I believe the spoon is original. I do not believe that the fork is original. I think this was a silver fork by the officer and he monogrammed all the different utensils. But I think this is one that he brought home from home or maybe purchased overseas or something during his service. So this I think is an addition. This from other pictures, all I can tell is that this is exactly like the other spoons that I've been able to see from other people who have one of these sets. And this is one of the rare knives. It has a really short handle. In fact, if you watch my video about the Scout Mess Kit, you will see uh, other utensils I have from my Scout Mess Kit. The only one I have that has the original utensils has a very short handle. The nice thing about this wide type of knife, this is common style of knife from the late 1800s, early 1900s, but because of it so flat and that blunted end, you can use this as a spatula to a lesser extent. I think that's pretty cool. So let's put this off to the side. Now, as we pull this out, we're going to finish our discussion about the bag. As you can see, it does not have a wool felt interior. A lot of them did. That way you could wet them down and would keep the canteen nice and cool due to evaporative cooling. So you have your pockets for your different utensils on each side. So we can put this away now. And again, he initialed it. I think that's cool. I love provenance like that. And then we can see how this is all put together. This is ingenious. We have a plate on one side. We have a skillet on the other. We have the cup that fits inside the canteen. I'm sorry, over the canteen bottom. Uh, there is a second version of this mess kit. Coal Cracker Bushcraft has one of these himself, but he has the half canteen. He did a good job of describing his set. So after this video and maybe the Theros video, you can go over and check out Coal Cracker if you want to see the, uh, the different version of this. Um, so the canteen itself, it's a steel body canteen. And you can see here that they added some solder to try to plug up the holes. And even if I were to look inside, it can see some pinholes inside of there. But this is one of the older types because it doesn't have that metal cap and there's nothing on the canteen itself that signifies that it had a chain attached to it like some of the newer canteens. So this is definitely one of the earliest versions that was sold. And as a historian, you look for features like that just to give you some clues because often you have no idea what time a lot of this equipment was really made. And as time goes on, there's always variations. Next thing, we'll talk about the cup. Now the cup is pretty nice size. What I like about the cup on this version versus the Stopple or Upton cup is that it has a wider base. I think that gives this cup an edge when it comes to Stopple. There's a little tab here that you can spin and it locks that handle in place so it doesn't collapse on itself. I think that's nice. If I put it on a table, you know, there's some stability to it. It is rounded, so you still have to watch it, but there is more stability with it. And if we take a look at this, this is the most ingenious part to the whole kit, in my opinion. You have a basic plate, right? You might be wondering, well, what are these little metal pieces for? We're going to explain that here in a moment. Over here, we have our skillet. The handle folds up. And if I were to try to hold it, it's just going to be kind of floppy. So there's this little tab here that slides into place and locks that handle into place. Now, isn't that nice? I love how it has the opening so you can hook it on something and dry it if you clean it. But there you go. That's your skillet. Now the cool part about this setup that makes it stand out, makes it so ingenious in engineering design, is this part. See how it has a little loop. That little loop attaches to the hook of the skillet. Like so. And as you close it, it makes a tight fitting little baker.
just like so. So you could use this to bake something in, like a Dutch oven. You can put your biscuits in there or some bread. It has a, that little tab here, actually slides over and locks it in. I'm not going to do it because it's really hard to get out. And since it's an antique, you know, I try to treat my antiques with a little bit of dignity and respect, especially when it comes to uh, forcing things when it may not be so easy to undo or redo. So there you go. As it is, like just as it is, it's solid, like it's difficult to open up. I have to take my thumb in here and I can push it apart easily. But if I were to close it, like so, then it stays by itself. So after you get done cooking or something, say you have some leftovers or maybe you wanna take a ration of something, you can use this as a container for your ration. Put that in your backpack and you can go. And then when you're ready to cook, you take it out and you've got your food already stored in there. So you have yourself a nice extra container. I think that's pretty cool. That is a nice selling point to me. And then you can of course pack your canteen, everything, put it all back in your bag and this would be separate. Now we have to answer the question. So what makes an awesome mess kit awesome? Now in my opinion, you have two things. You have versatility and you have to have stability you know when we're camping we're outdoors and stuff we have to think about stability this cup for example is awesome like it's it's really cool it's really big so it's uh, larger than most historical camp cups of the time period so it matches our more modern needs I think that's really nice but putting it on the ground sure it's more stable than the Upton or Stoppel mess kit but it's not great like it's it's because of the rounded edges and everything you put that on the ground and you might spill your coffee and that would be very unfortunate especially if you start putting a, it full of water soup or something like that now versatility yes especially this this is a really cool feature this makes this mess kit higher in versatile but not having a lid not having a lid for a pot or a separate pot i think makes this great not awesome but it makes it great unlike the two other mess kits where you have the scout mess kit which again you can find a modern scout mess kit at your big box store or in the link below in the description and it has your skillet it has your plate has your bowl or pot with a tight fitting lid and it has a cup and the older mess kits even came with silverware your, your utensils which i think that's a bonus and then you have your Theros mess kit. This is the best, I still stand by this, that this is the best mess kit that was ever designed, especially historically. I don't know why this thing did not continue to do well. Because it has two pots, it has a cup, it has a skillet, has a handle for the skillet that you can use for a spoon, and it has a way to contain your fuel source. I think that's genius. And I put a link below for the most modern equivalent that I found for this type of mess kit. It'd be really cool if I could get this thing reproduced someday, but my gosh, is the cost so expensive. So below, check out those two links, go to your big box store, get this. Again, you don't need something like any of this if you're just starting out. Grab something from your kitchen, see if you actually like spending time outdoors and cooking outdoors. If you don't, you don't want to get into all this. It's a lot of extra costs that you don't necessarily need to accrue to have a good time outdoors, all right? I, my scouts especially, I always tell them, young kids, you know, hey, if you want to get outdoors, just get outdoors. Don't let, you know, equipment stop you from going outdoors. In fact, this is my mantra for this year. Just get outside, you know? Don't worry about the gear. You know, take stuff that you have around your house. That's what you need to do. Just get outside. You're going to hear me say that a lot this year. Just get outside. You know, what are you waiting on? Get outside. Okay. All right. So there's these kits. I'll have a video at the end uh, to show you the Theros mess kit. But really quick, um, next week, we're going to do a video on pattern making to try to tie that back into the Nesmic and Kephart hatchets. It was supposed to be this week's video, but as I was recording, it didn't record any of my sound. So I had to start over again. So that'll be next week's video. My patrons on Patreon, about midway this week, you're gonna get that video. 
on this, the gramophone, and I'm also going to drop you some patterns as a way of saying thank you again for your continued support. We really appreciate it because with our Patreons, this channel just wouldn't be able to go where it's going. So we really appreciate you. Anything I can do to give back, I'm going to try to do that for you. Um, and my Nest Mech Axe is still available. So it's $200. I have one person who's interested in it. He's overseas. I'm trying to figure out how much the shipping is and see if we can work out a deal to get it out towards him. Um, but if he's not interested because of the cost, then it'll still be available. Check my description box below. It'll say whether it's sold or not. And my cookbook. If you have a mess kit, if you have uh, any interest in outdoor cooking and camping and bushcrafting or hiking or whatever, I've done a lot of research. I field tested it for myself and with my kids, my family. I have 97 historical recipes that are all really good. That's perfect for camping, including desserts, because going camping, you know, having comfort meals, having something sweet and desserts. In fact, that sugar is going to give you that extra oomph to keep going, you know. It's $25, it's PDF format, so everybody's got their phones on them, so you don't have to worry about damaging a book. You can put it on, download it on your PDF file on your phone. When you're out camping, you can look it up, and right there it is, all right? So drop me an email, check out my website, www.honorableoutfitters.com, because I have write-ups of historical gear. I'm gonna get one for the uh, Preston. The Preston video, like I said, kind of surprised me, so I'll get a write-up for my Preston mess kit on there with up close pictures and stuff. So check out that website, make sure to subscribe to it so you see new things that pop up there. Uh, we really appreciate anything you do for this channel um, we, that keeps pushing us forward. That's what it's about, right? All right, so if you're interested in the Theros mess kit video, check it out here. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Give a kiss hug to your loved ones and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.